The Do's and Don'ts of Hospital Visitations Hospital visitation is something that is less common in the church than it once was. This is unfortunate because it is times of illness that people usually need their pastor the most. Many times the ministry of a pastor at a bedside can make the difference, make an eternal difference in people's lives forever. A parishioner does not look at a pastor as just another visitor, but as a visitation from God and an invitation to commit their illness to him. Often we think that an elder or deacon can do as good a job as we can, and sometimes that's true. But usually it just seems to pastors to be a waste of time to spend a lot of time by a sickbed. But I can assure you as a pastor of more than 30 years experience, it is not a waste of time. People look forward to seeing their pastor and they appreciate that you care. When you go to visit the sick though, there are a few pointers that you need to keep in mind. Do's and don'ts. Do. Go to the hospital early when a person is sick, as soon as you can get there. Don't. Neglect to go to the hospital. People really want to see you when they're in the hospital, and so do their families. Do. Respect the rules of the hospital when you go. Pastors are not always privileged people in the hospital. They can't do what they want. Don't ignore the hospital rules. You want to keep a good relationship with the hospital. If you do, oftentimes you'll discover that the hospital will reach out to you when there's a special need. Do listen to the sufferer and to the family. Don't do most of the talking when you go to the hospital. Do visit with the family as well as with the patient. Many times the greatest person in need is not the person in the bed, but the person sitting beside it. Don't neglect the family when you go. Take time to pay attention to the family. Sometimes that means going down and sitting with them in the hospital cafeteria, or even taking them down to the chapel to pray, or helping them see around the hospital, since you usually know it better than they do. Do be respectful of people's feelings. Don't say, I know how you feel. That's one thing that is never true. We never know how another person feels. Nor can we expect that our experiences, no matter how close we may think to them to be the person in, to the person in the bed, are the same feelings. Everybody is different and unique. So we need to be listening and letting them talk about how they feel rather than trying to correct their feelings. Do pay attention when they talk. Don't share other people's stories. One of the worst things that people do in a hospital is go in and say, oh yes, I knew somebody who had the same thing and they were really, really sick. Don't be telling about other people because two patients are not alike, even though they may seem to be. But just listen and support them. Do listen to their symptoms, but do not diagnose their problems. Remember, you are not a doctor. And it's important that pastors refrain from giving medical opinions while they're in the hospital. Do be brief in your visits. Don't overstay your welcome. I think this cartoon says enough. Do pay attention to others in the room, such as the roommates that are in, in, the, in the bed next to them. Do not ignore their roommates. Remember, Pastor, you are called to help everybody. And don't just go to your parishioners and ignore others. Do listen to their unspoken questions. Do not simply go through the routine. Pastors do not need to be keeping their distance from people. We need to be in and involved in their lives and not just make it look like a job or a business. People resent that. Do. 
offer to pray for the people. Do not pray loud, long, or prayers that are not wanted. Always ask to pray first and pray when you're invited to pray. Do offer scripture and other spiritual material. Do not preach at the bedside. Many pastors will come in with uh, books of devotions, some pastors I know have even gone in with MP3 players with messages and sermons on them so people could listen to them. Anything that you can give people that they want is useful, but always ask before you read the Bible or give them something. Do be with the family during surgery. One of the loneliest times is when you're waiting there alone, finding out how your loved one is doing. Do not rush in or stay too long. A pastor needs to be sensitive to the feeling of people. He doesn't want to look like he showed that he's in a hurry when he comes to visit a family in a surgery room, nor does he want to stay on longer than he's really needed. Once the surgery is over and everything seems okay, that's the time to go. Sometimes you don't need to stay for the whole surgery. You just need to be led by the Spirit in that. Do follow up afterwards. Check and see how people are doing after they get out of the hospital. Do not assume that everything is all right once the hospital stay is over. Hospital visitation is as much an art as a skill. No two pastors do it the same and no two visits are the same. Just remember these things. First of all, listen to the patient. Listening is the most important thing you can do. Listen to the Holy Spirit as well as you're listening to the patient. Let the Holy Spirit guide you and let the Spirit do the leading in every encounter you do in the hospital.